In today's video, we're going to tie a fly called the Tron Microstone. This is a variation of my Tron Emerger, but it is a micro-sized stonefly nymph. So we're going to start with the Daiichi 1560 nymph hook, just like the other uh, Tron Emergers we tie. And I'm going to put it in a vise at an upward angle. Then I'm going to take a pair of pliers, and I'm going to grab it about the one-third portion uh, front half of the hook, about two-thirds of the way up from the back of the hook. I'm just going to take a pair of pliers. I'm just going to slightly kink, kink that shank. And basically this is going to make the fly look like a little crippled stone fly floating down the river in the current. Then we're going to take our tan Vivas thread. I like to use a 12 aught or a 14 aught. And we're just going to start our thread right up there by the thorax. Notice I put the, vi the, fl the hook in the vise with the part that I bent, kind of the flat portion. Uh, reason being, if you put it down in the vise like this, your thread's going to constantly fall off the front of the eye of the hook. So kind of keep it up in the vise, just like so. Then I'm going to take some golden yellow, Antron, Zelon, any type of nylon fibers. I like to use Zelon if you can track it down. And we're going to take about 10 or so fibers, pretty sparse. You don't want to overdo it on the tail. And I'm just going to tie these down the shank of the hook. Now at this point you kind of have to dodge the hook point a little bit and be careful not to break your thread. I'm just going to trim those out of there. Now we're ready for the body which is going to be a more generous clump of our Zelon. Same color, kind of a golden olive or a golden yellow color. I'd say the clump is probably 25, maybe 30 or so fibers. Still don't want to overdo it, but you definitely need more for this portion of the fly. And then we're just going to take that clump, we're going to tie it down along the side of the shank of the hook. And I'll spiral my thread forward. And we can trim out the butt ends. Now I'm just going to build up a little bit of a taper to the thorax. So just a little bit of thread here. Kind of building up a small slight taper to the thorax from the back of the body. Not necessarily a huge deal. Just makes me feel a little better and makes it look a little buggy. Now we're ready to tie in the casing. We're going to use about the same amount of fibers as we did for the body. 25, 30 or so. We're going to tie these in on the flat portion of the shank of the hook, kind of the portion that we bent. Now I'm going to take this casing about back to where I started to bend, where the kink bend basically starts. And just kind of clean it all up. Now we're ready to tie in the legs. This is where things start to get a little more tricky. I'm going to take a little bit smaller clump of the same fibers, about 15-20. And I'm going to tie these in in an X configuration, a few wraps forward from the casing, right on top of the shank of the hook. So two nicely placed X wraps. And I like to leave the strands a little longer. That way you have something to kind of grab onto and manipulate when you tie them in. So I like to leave them about two inches long. Don't tie them in too short because then you're fighting them the entire time. Then we're going to do the same thing towards the front half of the head of this fly. So I'm going to take four or five wraps forward with my thread, spacing out these legs. Basically, if you ever looked at a stone fly, they have two or three distinct sets of legs. It's kind of hard to fit three on this small of a fly. So we're going to go with two. We'll kind of 
flare out, giving the fly a little bit more separation from the two sets of legs, making it look a little more like three. There's my last X wrap. Then I can take my thread forward. And at this point, if you like, you can whip finish just with a single wrap or half hitch, just so all your work doesn't come undone. So now I've got to pull all this forward. I'm going to take the casing and my two sets of legs, pull it forward, and I'm going to lay a wrap or two of thread just over that entire hunk. It doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just basically pulling everything out of the way and separating it from the back half of the body. Now we're going to do our typical twist here as we do on our Tron emergers. Just take that Z-line, twist it, whoop, let go on accident, twist it into a rope with your fingers. Nice and tight. You're looking for a completely uniform, wound tightly piece of rope. You'll know you did it right because when you go to wrap the body, if you're not getting that perfect ribbed segmentation, then you didn't wrap it tight enough or enough. So the first wrap is the most important. Once I get it all twisted here, I'm just going to take that material and I kind of have to dodge my bobbin and the hook point. There we go. I kind of use my index finger to kind of help aid in that first wrap. Now we kind of have to dodge the hook point and the bobbin, kind of wrapping it, weaving in and out of the hook bend. Nice tight wraps. You can see we're getting that perfect segmentation. That's the beauty of this fly. One of the reasons this fly works so good is because there's just a subtle amount of flash. This uh, synthetic fiber is very different than your natural fibers where it has a translucent flash to it and that's why I like it so much is that translucency that is absolutely everything in this fly now once we get to the back of the casing I'm going to unwind the casing and the legs now you have to very carefully just kind of separate everybody I pull the casing back out of the way I take my legs you can use a, a little bodkin here to just kind of separate everybody they really don't get too mumble jumbled too bad. But just kind of pull everybody, just like that, pull them all to the side, get them out of the way. Then we're going to take a brown marker and I'm going to color up my rope of Zelon here with the brown marker. This gives the fly the kind of typical golden stone two tone finish. If you've ever looked at a golden stone, they're not all golden. They have a lot of brown in them. So there we go, I have my rope colored. Now I'm just going to continue to wrap that forward. Usually I can only get two wraps, maybe three, but we'll just stick with two on that one. Two wraps behind that first set of legs. Then I'm going to make the wrap in front of that set of legs, making sure to separate my z line. I'll kind of pull the first set of legs forward out of the way. Then we can continue to wrap. Usually I can get three or so wraps in between my sets of legs. Then we got to jump in front of that last set of legs. Usually two wraps is all you need. Let's kind of give myself a little bit more of a landing pad here for that last wrap. There we go. And then you can capture it with your thread. I usually unclip once it's captured. That'll flatten out that Zelon and make it a little easier to basically capture, lay flat, and tie off. Then we can trim out the Z line we used for the body. Now we're ready for our casing. I'm just going to draw that Z line right over the top of the fly. Pull nice and tight. 
I'll lay some wraps in front and behind that Z-Lon. Then you can trim that Z-Lon out of there very carefully, as close as you can without trimming your thread. Then we can whip finish. Now we can trim our legs and tail. So first we'll trim our tail. Now on this fly, on the other trons for the mayflies, we tied in the tail a little bit longer and trimmed it about the length of the body. This fly just the opposite. Trim it about half the length of the body. Stones have very stubby little tails. Now we're going to trim the legs. I like to trim at a backward angle from the front of the fly. So I kind of take my scissors and I start in close on the front legs and then leave the back legs a little bit longer. Just like that. See how the front legs are a little bit shorter? That's the look I'm going for. And then I'll do the same thing over here on the other side. And if you get a few longer fibers you can just trim those out of there. Now the head we use tan thread, so I like to take my brown marker and color my thread. That tan thread really absorbs that brown marker and helps it blend in to the thorax of our fly. There we go, and that just kind of ties off the fly. Let me get it here in my vise at a different angle so you can kind of view it a little better, but that is my little Tron stone. Now the neat thing about this fly is you can tie it pretty small. This is a 14. I've tied them all the way down to an 18. 18 is tough. 16 is easy to do. Uh, but very small, simple micro stone. A lot of the micro stones we have here in Colorado are not big. They're tiny. Uh, we call them yellow sallies. They can be itty bitty. So this fly helps imitate uh, those little mini stone flies. Some of the bulkier patterns we have uh, out here won't imitate just because they're they're too big. That is the Tron Microstone.